thank you for yielding to me for an opening statement. I welcome uh, uh, our entire panels, especially Dr. Lori, for being here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, one of the committee's greatest responsibilities is ensuring that our nation has the medical and public health preparedness and response capabilities necessary to respond to all hazards and all threats, whether natural or man-made. The Pandemic and All Hazard Preparedness Act answered the critical question of who's in charge through the creation of the Assistant Secretary of Preparedness and Response. This law strengthened our medical surge capabilities and improved state and local public health security. PAPA also enhanced medical countermeasure research, development, and procurement through the creation of the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority. As we work to reauthorize the Pandemic and All Hazards Preparedness Act in BioShield, it's critical that this committee take a hard look at what's working well and what's not working well. The good news is that we've come a long way, and as H1N1 demonstrated, we're better prepared to respond to the public health emergencies today than we were five years ago. But while we've come a long way, we know that much work remains to be done, and we cannot lose sight of the urgency surrounding our work in this area. Just today, news broke that the department plans to make cuts to preparedness programs. This raises significant questions as to how the administration is prioritizing and coordinating their preparedness and response mission. Medical and public health preparedness and response is a matter of national security. PAPA's reauthorization is the opportunity to make the targeted and strategic changes to the medical and public health preparedness and response authorities and programs necessary to strengthen and improve our capabilities to successfully respond to all threats. We have the opportunity to draw upon the lessons learned after five years, the 2009 H1N1 influenza pandemic, the Haiti disaster, the Gulf oil spill, and the recent disaster in Japan. <clears throat> Many of these incidents underscore the ability of Mother Nature to throw us a biologic curveball with the potential to wreak havoc on the scale of the 1918 pandemic. The death of Osama bin Laden is a sobering reminder in the, that the 21st century threats are real and we must be prepared to address chemical, biologic, radiological, and nuclear threats. The Commission on the Prevention of WMD Proliferation and Terrorism has repeat, repeatedly warned that it's, and I quote, more likely than not that a weapon of mass destruction will be used in a terrorist act by the end of 2013, and that we must make bioterrorism a higher priority. Just last year, the WMD Commission again warned that we are, and I quote, woefully behind in our capability to rapidly produce vaccines and therapeutics, unquote, which we all know is critical for responding to CBRN threats, whether natural or man-made. Last year, the administration's Public Health Emergency Medical Countermeasures Enterprise Review concluded, and I quote, our nation must have the nimble, flexible capability to produce medical countermeasures rapidly in the face of an attack or threat, known or unknown, including a novel, previously unrecognized, naturally occurring emerging infectious disease, unquote. <clears throat> if we're to achieve the shared goal of having a prepared nation capable of responding to all hazards and all threats. We must ensure the continuity of critical medical preparedness and public health preparedness authorities and programs. We must ensure that these programs are targeted, sound, and achieving the measured results and returns American taxpayers expect and deserve. Where we've not gotten the policy exactly right, we must take this opportunity to refocus to strengthen and to improve these programs and authorities. This includes ensuring that our medical countermeasures public-private partnerships reflect modern-day threats, and the Food and Drug Administration provides the regulatory certainty and support to ensure a robust medical countermeasure enterprise. We must foster and accelerate the development and innovation of medical countermeasures, which includes fully funding BARDA's advanced research and development. 
let me restate that, which requires fully funding BARDA's advanced research and development funding. We have always been able to come together in a bipartisan manner on this issue when it comes to prioritizing medical and public health preparedness and response. Our work in this area is a matter of national security, and to the chairman and the ranking member, I look forward to again partnering with my colleagues to reauthorize PAPA and BioShield and to do it in this Congress. I thank the chair. Thank you, Senator Burr, and thank you also for your great leadership on this whole issue, as, as Senator Enzi said, going back uh, several years. Uh, you <laughs> led the effort in this committee. Thank you that, for that leadership very much. And uh, Senator Casey, uh, also, I guess the two of you are co-sponsoring the reauthorization bill uh, this year. And uh, I'd recognize Senator Casey for opening statement, but uh, if you want. I'll submit a statement for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate that very much, Senator Casey. And Senator Mr. Chairman, I'll submit mine to it, and uh, I'll turn over the ranking member duties to Senator Burr. So I have to be at another meeting, and I, I do want to thank Senators Hatch and Roberts for their work on this issue as well before and the, the leadership they provided and the fact that they're here to participate today, too. Thank you very much, Senator Enzi, and uh, I'll uh, have the privilege of introducing Dr. Nicole Lurie, and then I'm going to